is InvestorIdeas.com, and we're talking today with Pro Colombia's President Felipe Jaramillo about trends and opportunities in Colombia and how he feels this is one of Colombia's most exciting moments in history. Felipe, you've just taken on the role of President of Pro Colombia starting in June, so I thought you could share your first impressions uh, when you came in and also now that you're in there, uh, giving us what you're thinking and seeing firsthand as you get a deeper insight of Colombia's opportunities and challenges. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, as you said, um, I just took over the position of President of Pro Colombia about four months ago. Um, I made the. I decided to make the transition from the private sector to the public sector because, uh, in my opinion, this is the best moment in Colombia's history. We're making the transition to peace. We're entering the post-conflict era in the country, uh, and this opens a lot of opportunities for us as a society, for us as a country, for the Colombian economy. Uh, and I feel very grateful to have the opportunity uh, to help within this uh, transition that we're uh, making and that we'll be making and working on for the next uh, few years. So what I found was uh, a great organization, uh, ProColombia, uh, is the trade promotion agency of the country, so we're in charge of uh, promoting Colombian exports to the world in uh, uh, fostering FDI, uh, foreign investment to Colombia, and promoting Colombia as a tourism destination around the world as well. Um, and as you would imagine, uh, in the context of peace, of, of the post-conflict, what we do is uh, even more important, if that's even possible, uh, because it's the right moment to promote Colombia, because the world is looking to Colombia uh, in a different way, uh, Colombia is a country that has many natural wonders, that has a very stable and fast-growing economy, that has a lot of potential in, in a lot of sectors and industries that are growing uh, really fast around the, the world. Uh, and now that we have peace, we can actually take full uh, advantage and exploit all those uh, great things that we have as a country. Do you see um, any potential impact on Colombia's free trade agreement that you have with the United States now that the election has taken place and a lot of discussion was talked about trade agreements? Um, do, you see, do you see any conflict with that or any obstacles in that, or do you feel pretty comfortable with what you have in place? No, we feel very comfortable uh, with what we have in place. All the reasons to believe that that's going to continue to be the case in the future. Um, we have a, a trade agreement in place with the U.S., uh, which was ratified by the U.S. Congress many years ago. And in, and, um, and in that context, context, we have been working consistently for many decades with U.S. authorities to increase uh, the trade uh, between our two economies. And, and, that, and actually that has had a positive impact uh, in those um, trade in the trade numbers, and we're seeing an interesting growth in um, U.S. exports to Colombia, and we're seeing the diversification of Colombian exports to the U.S. So, I mean, we have every reason to believe that the uh, future of the trade relationships uh, between our two nations is very bright. Um, in that in that context as well, do you uh, have any new free, uh, free trade agreements that you're negotiating right now or underway or in the pipeline? And also, can you share some of the success stories you've got with some of your current agreements in place? Yeah, so we have 16 trade agreements. Uh, we have trade agreements with almost every country in the Americas, with the European Union. Uh, we're negotiating one with Turkey. Uh, we have uh, free trade as well with South Korea. Uh, we're negotiating one right now with Japan as well. So uh, we do believe in the benefits of uh, the opening to the um, uh, world markets and having an open economy uh, in internationalized economy, in export to the world, in uh, 
use the global value chains as a, a strategic tool uh, to grow uh, the local industry. So uh, we will continue in that path. We definitely believe, believe that that's the right way to go and we are seeing the benefits. And uh, we've seen how uh, trade numbers with those countries that we have uh, trade agreements have been increasing uh, in the last uh, few years. And, and we are seeing very interesting numbers when it comes to trade with Latin American countries, with the U.S., uh, with Europe a little bit less, but still the uh, increase has been very interesting. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, we're uh, looking to Asia uh, even more and more uh, because we believe that region with a lot, a lot of potential and a region with which we had uh, very little uh, trade. Some of the reasons uh, we just signed um, a trade deal with South Korea and one why we're negotiating uh, one with Japan. Uh, hopefully that will lead to uh, negotiations in that region. Uh, and we will continue to work really hard to make sure that the Colombian industries and enterprises have all the tools that they need to actually uh, internationalize their business. That sounds very exciting. Um, Lonely Planet just recently had Colombia on its list of one of the top destinations to visit in 2017. And um, I know firsthand from being there that how much I loved it. <laughs> but for travelers that have never been there, can you can you sort of just give some highlights of some of the best reasons to come and visit Colombia, and also maybe talk about the you know how safe it is now compared to what perception used to be. Absolutely. So uh, we as a country are making the transition to peace, and um, uh, we believe that a country in peace. It has all the necessary conditions to become a, a more important player in the tourism uh, industry, global, I mean. Uh, Colombia has a lot of natural wonders, a lot of cultural wonders, uh, wonders that uh, have not been seen by the world because, uh, as you are aware, as a result of violence um, and the internal conflict, the numbers of international tourism in the past weren't uh, as high as one would hope to. Uh, but in the last few years, we've seen uh, very significant increases in international tourism uh, or international visitors going to Colombia. Um, we're even uh, seeing very interesting numbers of international visitors going to those regions of Colombia that were hit the hardest by the internal conflict. So we have zones uh, in Los Llanos Orientales, Guayanilla, Paupes, uh, La Sierra de la Macarena. Uh, we have the Amazon jungle, the um, uh, a lot of places of the country, uh, different from the places that people are more aware of, like Cartagena and Medellin and Bogota, which obviously are seeing also very big numbers of international tourism, but now we're seeing a bigger Colombia. We have been talking consistently about a bigger Colombia because we're uh, integrating those parts of the country that were uh, falling a little bit behind uh, in terms of development um, as a result of the internal conflict, and now they're starting to catch up. We're investing really heavily in those regions, uh, and obviously tourism is going to be very important uh, in that purpose, and uh, we're promoting those zones, and we're seeing uh, the tourism industry in Colombia as one of the main engines, engines of the economy uh, moving forward. And, and in terms of industry sectors, where are you seeing, other than tourism, where are you seeing some of the growth, and where do you see some of the biggest opportunities moving forward? Yeah, so we are focusing a lot of our efforts in, in terms of uh, economic development in six uh, sectors in which we believe we have great potential as a country in the global market. Uh, in addition to tourism, we we are investing heavily uh, and promoting development in sectors such as 
the services, BPOs, creative industries, uh, metal mechanic, uh, confections, textiles, uh, um, um, and there's plenty of opportunities uh, for international uh, investors to come and invest in those um, sectors because we see uh, the potential uh, that they're gonna that they're gonna have in the next few years, and we believe that the global expansion that the the global expansion that the Colombian economy is going to have uh, presents itself as a um, very interesting opportunity for investors, especially in some of those sectors that we are focusing uh, right now. So in terms of that expansion, um, do you see that Colombia has been able to offset some of the drop in global oil prices because that was a big part of your economy and you see a rebalancing in terms of some of these new sectors and the growth that they represent? Yeah, that's a very good point because actually one of the main reasons uh, for us to be focusing efforts in six uh, specific sectors of the economy is because we want to diversify the economy. Historically, uh, we were a little bit more dependable on oil and commodities that we uh, would like it to. Uh, and obviously now we're having, uh, we're feeling the pain of the drop in oil prices. We have um, fiscal difficulties. 20% of the government revenue used to come from oil. And that now is gone for the moment because we're not seeing any revenue coming from oil as a result of the drop in oil prices. So we're diversifying the economy uh, and these drop in prices has become an opportunity uh, to speed up uh, that process. And as I said, uh, we're very optimistic about the growth that is uh, going to come, and we're actually already seeing uh, seeing that growth in sectors of the economy and that uh, will be uh, the key engines uh, moving forward in the next uh, few decades. Maybe Brazil can look at some of what you're doing as a model because they... They definitely need to diversify as well. Um, so, so in closing, <laughs> so so in closing, uh, again, there's a lot of people that don't know a lot about the new Colombia and the Colombia that you're moving forward with. So, for our listeners, what would you tell them that would surprise them, but of course, in a very positive and a good way? Well, Colombia is uh, one of the countries that has had a most significant transition or transformation in the last uh, few decades. It's probably the country in the world which has had the most significant tra uh, transformation. Uh, we have a very difficult path. Our present and our future are very bright. Uh, in the international uh, community seeing that, we're seeing very big uh, in numbers of FDI, of foreign investment, going to the country. We're one of the top 30 destinations when it comes to foreign investment today in the world. Uh, we're about to enter the OCDE, uh, which is something that is going to give uh, a lot of security for international investors. And that guarantees that whatever is the government uh, in the country, they will have to continue to manage the economy responsibly and uh, maintain good practices uh, and good public policies in general. Uh, so we're very optimistic. Uh, the growth that we're seeing in terms of GDP is very important. We're the second fastest growing country in Latin America. Uh, the projection is that next year we're going to continue uh, to maintain that, that spot. Um, and as I said, uh, we're focusing on those sectors of the economy in which we have great potential services, tourism, metal mechanic, manufacturing, many sectors in which we know there's a lot of international investors uh, looking at, at Colombia in a different way, seeing all the opportunities that are opening up as a result of uh, the peace and the transition to peace that we're making right now. Tourism is going to be a great engine for the economy. So we have all the reasons to believe that uh, the uh, future in Colombia is going to be very bright. We believe this is the best moment in Colombian history. 
and, and we in Pro Colombia are very proud and feel uh, very fortunate to be able to work for uh, the country in this very significant moment.